Whilst government restrictions remain in place, we are incredibly sad that we have not been able to welcome you into our school um, to ask your questions face to face or take a tour of our incredible building. But we hope that tonight's event is a good chance for you, the students that are making a huge decision about where you are going to go to secondary school to ask anything mm. that you would like to know about life at ESJ. You will notice that there is a Q&A function at the right hand side of your screen. When you submit a question, it won't appear on the public wall straight away um, as it comes to us to approve first. So therefore, please be patient if you don't see your question right away, but be assured that we have received it and we will get back to you. Please submit any question that you have in here, no matter how silly or ridiculous you might think it is. And I will reiterate that tonight's event is for the students and we are encouraging their questions tonight. So parents, please feel free to email us directly or re-watch the recording of our previous virtual open evening to answer any remaining questions that you may have. Um, all details on how to do this will be displayed at the end. So there are some teachers um, that you may hear from tonight that we're going to try and keep it as brief as we can. You will hear from Mr. Hiroshimu, who is our head teacher. You will hear from Miss Petru, who will be your head of year if you come here in year seven. And you'll hear from me um, as assistant head teacher. You'll also hear from um, Mr. O'Milly and Mr. Benzid, our deputy heads. Um, our deputy head teacher, sorry, who are responding to your questions in the chat as they are coming through. I'm going to pass you over now um, to Miss Petru, who's going to give you a short introduction and then I'll introduce you to the students. Welcome to all primary students. My name is Miss Petru. I'm head of year se seven at Epping St John's. That means that when you come to Epping St John's, I will be making your transition as smooth as possible. We are delighted that you're joining us this evening for our student takeover. You'll be hearing from some ESJ students and two of which are in year seven and only started here a few weeks ago. So they can give you a real insight into what life um, at, is like at ESJ for a new student. We are so, so sorry you couldn't come and visit the school and see us in person, but we hope this makes up for it. We know you have a really difficult choice ahead of you, but ESJ is a school where you can learn, develop as a person and have fun at the same time. The sky is the limit at ESJ. This school has been improving consistently for the past few years and we promise you that it will keep improving throughout your seven year journey with us. I personally can't wait to welcome you all in the coming months and officially in September 20, 2021 as your head of year. I'm now going to be handing back to Miss Vickers, who's going to introduce the amazing students that you're going to be hearing from. Perfect. Thank you so much, Miss Petru. Um, so finally, I'm going to introduce you to the important people um, and the stars of the show tonight who are our students. Um, say hey, everyone. So they're all at school still um, staying late so they can answer all of your questions um, tonight and we have a variety of students here with us that you can see on your screen in front of you. So you're going to hear from our year 11s um, including Mia, Josie, Tilly and Samaya. You're going to hear from our year 8s Tom and Cara. You're going to hear from our newest members of the school in year 7 Miles and Oscar and you're also going to hear from um, our year 9 Ruby who's going to tour you through our virtual tour of the school. So we understand um, that for many of you, you haven't been able to come into our building and tour our school and we would like to give you the chance to know our building as best as we possibly can. Our sixth form leadership team have created a video tour for you and um, which will be longer than the one you're going to see tonight and um, that will be a real life video that's going to be available on our website um, but tonight it gives me great pleasure to pass you over to Ruby who's going to introduce our virtual tour of the school that's been created via Minecraft. Welcome to our virtual school tour. Our virtual school tour will be in Minecraft. A group of eight year nine students created this tour over a two weeks period for you tonight. As we go through our main entrance doors, we can turn left and we have our main hall, which we use for assemblies, presentations and school productions. For example, last year we performed High School Musical. I was lucky enough to sing in it. Here we have our main reception and now this is our hub slash canteen area. The canteen offers a range of hot and cold food options. We also have a salad and pasta bar. This is our activity studio, which we use for our dance lessons, which you will learn a range of different types of dancing. My favourite is contemporary. We just went past our canteen again, and as we continue down this corridor, we have our sports hall, where we do a range of sports like trampolining and badminton, just to name a few. As we come out either side, we have our PE office, two sets of change rooms for boys and girls, and the PE toilets. Now, as we exit through these doors, we have our outside area. 
We have our MUGA, which stands for Multi-Use Games Area, which we use for sports like tennis or netball. We also use it for break times. We also have our AstroTurf and our three sports fields, which we also use for PE activities like rugby and football. Here is our, PE, our patio, which we also use for break times. As you can see, this is our east and west wing from outside. We are now going to enter through the east wing ground floor. Here is our languages room. At ESJ, we offer Spanish and French, which you will get to learn a bit of both up, up into your GCSE options. And we don't just learn about the countries themselves, we also learn about different countries that speak that specific language. Our languages and science department can be found in east ground. As we now go up east wing stairs, we enter our humanities area located in east first. Humanities encompasses history, geography and RE. Here is an example of each of these rooms. In history, my favourite to topic we have learned so far is the suffragettes and how they protested for women's rights. Here at ESJ, we are a Church of England school, so you will learn RE right up to year 11, where you will then sit your GCSEs. We are now about to enter Street First. Here is an art room, which we do have two of, but here is one as an example. We also display loads of students' art as we are proud and like to show off our hard work here. As we continue down the street, we will soon be arriving at Food Tech. In Food Tech, we get to learn a range of different things and get to cook things like Yule Log or pizza. Either side, we have our pastoral office and lockers. We are now at the chaplaincy. Reverend Lee visits often to meet students and deliver assemblies. This is our sixth form common room where sixth formers can chill or study in their free time or in their free periods. We have a large sixth form that study over 20 different courses. To conclude up here, we have our drama room and our music room where we learn instruments like music production and the computers, keyboard, ukulele, guitar, and many more. These two are my personal favourites as I like to play ukulele, which we also have club of, a club of, and that's how I learned how to play. We are now at West Wing first floor, which is used for English and media lessons. In English, we get to read books like Jekyll and Mr Hyde and Shakespeare plays like Romeo and Juliet. Down these stairs is our maths department. Here is an example of one of our rooms. WG5 is our code for our rooms. It simply means West Ground, Fifth Floor. I enjoy maths also because I have learned how to create your graphs. Here is an example of a computing room. We have six fully fitted computing rooms in the school and we study computing up to year nine. I particularly enjoy coding. We are now ending on street ground where we have more lockers and toilets which are located in every wing, upper and lower and some corridors. This is one of our three DT rooms. They include a range of machinery and equipment to use for woodwork. Last year we created a clock out of wood. Finally we have our student services, an example of one of our science lab where we carry out a range of different experiments like using Bunsen burners. Here is our East Playground, which we also use for breaks and lineups. This is our school and bus coaches area. This concludes our tour in Minecraft. I hope you enjoyed and got a good idea of our school in Minecraft as you sadly couldn't be here due to COVID. Mr. Benzid will also be tweeting this video after and a fire will go out so you can explore our school in Minecraft and look around for yourself. We all hope to invite you through ESJ doors soon. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ruby. Um, and thank you to all of the students who worked really hard um, to create that virtual tour for us. Um, I'm hoping that you're going to enjoy logging in and having a little tour around yourself. Um, as we said, more details on how you can do that um, will be available at the end. 
So we're going to move swiftly on. Um, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to pass you over to the students who are going to be answering some of the questions that you pre-submitted um, when you signed up for this event. Um, as we've said, if you've got any more questions that are arising, um, please feel free to pop them in the Q&A box at the side um, and we'll answer them verbally at the end. So first pre-submitted question um, I'm going to throw to Tilly, um, which asked, what trips do you run and will I be able to go on them? Tills. Um, here at ESJ, there are lots of opportunities to go on various different trips. One way is through the reward system. You will get, you will be given ACE points for attendance, attitude to learning, progress and behaviour. All these things will help you achieve a place on the, on the reward trip. This will be measured throughout the whole school year as they are at the end of term. These, these can go to themes park, theme parks, the cinema, in or out of school and even trampoline parks like Jump Street in Chelmsford, which I went to last year as one of the reward trips. In Year 7, you get, you get the opportunity with the modern foreign languages to go on a day, tri to go on a day trip to Boulogne. Here you get to sample French, French food like snails and frog's legs, um, which I have tried myself. Visit the aquarium and practice some of the language you have been working on. If you choose to take a language as an option, you get the opportunity to spend a week in Paris or Barcelona, visiting famous landmarks and exploring the culture. Performing Arts offer several trips to see various top West End theatre shows. We have a dance company in ESJ that has dance at Pineapple Studios on a day out. We also organise an annual visit to the Move It dance exhibition every year. There were also trips organised this year to Disneyland Paris and New York. Unfortunately, these trips had to be cancelled due to COVID. The PE department have been to Barcelona for football and Paris for netball tournaments. And of course, we have our regular ski trip each year. Other trips are available through different departments. There is history trip to Poland, visiting concentration camps, and several different trips available if you choose to study geography GCSE. There are all, these are all really enjoyable experiences, some that I've been able to experience myself, which has given me an opportunity to create new friendships with different people from different year groups. They're available to everyone, but they do cost money, so you won't be able to go on all of them. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Tilly. Next pre-submitted question. Um, what happens if someone isn't very nice to me? Um, I'm going to pass you over to Cara, who will answer this one for you. If someone isn't nice to you at Epping St John's, personally, I would ask them to stop at first, or if it's really upset you, always tell a member of staff. Luckily, we don't have a lot of nastiness at our school, and any form of bullying is not tolerated here and will be dealt with straight away. If you don't want to talk to any teacher, we have a safeguarding team. This team is a tra trained group of adults who deal with problems that you may have from worries to troubles. If you don't want to talk to a teacher at all about it, you can tell your parents who can then contact the school. I myself have met these people and they are really, really kind people and know how to solve your problems best way possible. The safe guidance team also do, do not teach so they can investigate the issue during the day. Once they are notified about what is happening, they ask for a statement and this is when you write down what's happened in detail. Also, at the beginning of the day, there is form time. You could also talk to your form tutor about any issues. This is hard right now as we don't have form time at the moment, but it, the option of messaging your teacher on Teams or via Gmail is always available. Thankfully, this rarely happens at our school since we are a kind and loving school and love you for who you are. I hope to see you at Epping jo St John's next year. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Cara. Next pre-submitted question, um, what creative projects do you do at secondary school? Um, Samaya, passing that over to you. We are constantly doing a wide variety of creative projects during school at ESJ. In Year 7 for History, you complete a castle project, including creating your own castle and then showing, it, and then showing the class a presentation describing it. All throughout your time at ESJ, you have the opportunity for artwork you've, been, you've completed to be shown in the local area. This includes the art festival at the church and the Christmas card competition. This gives you the opportunity for your work to be sent out to the local community representing ESJ. We also do lots of experiments in science, from chemistry using Bunsen burners to dissecting pig hearts and organs in biology. 
At the moment, as a school, we are participating in the Young Writers' Competition in which you can create an 100-word story about anything of your choice. Outside of lesson time, we are offered to take part in the Duke of Edinburgh's award. This is something that me and a few of my friends took part in this year and we really enjoyed. Another creative project is the high, offered is the Higher quali Project Qualification. This allows you to gain a qualification by creating a piece of work revolving around your chosen topic or theme, anything from fashion to social media. Overall, I would imagine that everyone could find something that they love to do creatively at ESJ as we have so much to offer. Amazing. Thanks so much, Samaya. Next question, um, a very popular question. Um, how do I get on the school football team? Very important. Uh, Tom, passing this one over to you, please. To get into the football team, there are trials spanning a couple of weeks, which gives the coaches time to assess the players and their characteristics. As soon as fixtures are released, there will be a list of the final scores in the key department that into the complaint. We are entered into various competitions, such as the National Cup, the Essex Cup and league games against other schools in our area for all age groups. Training is on every week after school. This is not just for football team players. Anyone who has an interest in football and wants to improve their skills can join in. At the moment, due to COVID restrictions, PE staff are not permitted to do any contact sports and unfortunately football falls on the, under this umbrella. So we are currently running a virtual club on Shama Homework, which keeps all our skills intact for when the games resume. As well as boys teams, we also have girls teams and last year they were successful in all competitions, breaking new barriers and improving the school. Thank you. Perfect, thanks Tom. Uh, controversially last year our girls teams were actually uh, performed better than our boys teams, so the boys have got some work to do this year to catch up I think. Tom's shaking his head, he's not happy with that answer. Um, so the next pre-submitted question, um, I don't want a detention, is it really strict at ESJ? Um, I'm going to pass you to one of our newest members in year seven, Miles, who I think is probably going to be the best person to answer this for you. Miles. I think Epping St John's is firm but fair. Epping St John's is a lovely school with lovely people who are there to make sure that you are having an incredible experience. At ESJ, there are some very simple rules that are easy to follow and keep to. All these rules are explained to you as soon as you get there to give you a good time to memorise them. There is, some, there is a sanction system, but, but which starts with a warning for guesses to a longer detention. The worse your behaviour, the worse the punishment you will receive. As long as you are respectful and obey the rules given, you will be just fine. If you don't have a problem, if you do have a problem, staff will will do whatever they can to, to help resolve that issue. But on the other hand, ESJ will gladly and willingly reward you with ace points whenever you get the opportunity to. Ace points are a type of currency that rewards you for good behaviour. The more ace points you earn, the better things you can buy in the ace shop. This is a place within the school where you can spend your points with things such as chocolate, stationery, vouchers for things like Starbucks and Amazon and etc. This is a positive thing as it gives stu students something to work towards. Perfect. Thank you so much, Miles, very much. So we're now going to move on to some of your questions and um, that you've been submitting throughout the evening. If you've still got some questions, then there's still time. So please feel free um, to write them in. And this is also our chance to put the students on the spot a little bit. Um, and they're going to reply to you and some of the things that you've been asking. A really important question actually that's in there, um, which is uh, what are the teachers like at your school? So we're going to hear kind of from two points of view. I'm going to put two on the spot. I'm going to start with Oscar, though, um, who's a year seven. So Oscar is a year seven. I'm sure we'll be able to tell you what the teachers here are like and then we'll hear from a year 11 afterwards so you can hear from both points of view. Oscar. Um, all teachers here at ESJ are lovely and kind. Um, obviously they can be strict uh, if you misbehave but they will support you every step of the way in whatever you do. Um, Yeah, perfect. Oh, so really nice. Um, Mia, as you have 11, is there anything you can maybe add on that? So how do you find teachers at Epping St John's now you've had them for five years? Um, as much as them, as much as some of them can sometimes get on your nerves, um, they're all there to always just support you, especially going into year 11. I can say fully that even through lockdown, we were set work. Yes, a work, but it actually helped just sitting there 
having your teachers always there and as at the moment it's been a bit more difficult with like work marking and obviously stuff like that but to be honest we've been taught to mark our own work with teachers guidance which also allows us to talk to other people about their work and it's sort of it's actually helped a lot more not saying that covid's helped but <laughs> obviously not but the teachers at the school they're all just there to support you and as though although most of them can be not strict but they're strict when they need to be but they're only sort of like that just to get you used to your revision Josie. and also all of our teachers are really easy to speak to even in lockdown we were communicating with our teachers they were all making sure we are okay with our schoolwork and our general well-being as well so they're really easy to talk to as well Thanks very much, girls. High praise indeed. Um, and at least you know that's honest because they didn't know that question was going to come through. So we're very flattered by your responses. Um, just having a little read through um, some incredible comments here about our support for Year 7. Thank you so much um, for those of you um, who are praising the school for what we've been doing recently. You're right, it has been a challenging time for all of us, um, transition included, um, but we're very grateful for, for the positive feedback. We're, we're doing our best and we're trying um, with, our, with children at the centre of our decisions all the time. So we're glad that, that it's meaning a lot to you at home as well. Um, Josie, I'm going to go back to you and put you on the spot again, I'm afraid. Um, a question asking about the sports teams that you can join at school. Um, could you just expand on that a little bit for us? At ESJ, we offer a wide range of sports clubs av available for all years. Um, there are sports such as netball, football, dance, trampolining, basketball, athletics, and even a fitness um, sessions took place last year. These are just a few of the many clubs that ESJ offers. Um, they're a great way to work on your own sports skills, as well as working on the team and making friends from other years, not just your own. At the moment, these clubs are taking place on teams and show my homework because of COVID, but they'll be back on in school as soon as possible. Perfect. Thanks so much, girls. Sorry, um, I was just reading the questions as they were coming through. Um, we've had a question come through that I'm going to pass to the students first and then um, I might pass it um, over to Mr O'Milly as well. He doesn't know this yet. Um, I'm, I'm going to pass it over to him too as our deputy head um, in charge of quality of education. Um, year 11, so I'm going to go to you. Um, the question has come through, how do you grade the students? So I want you to think really about if you complete a piece of work, how do you get feedback on it? So how do you know what you need to improve? What do teachers do to help you improve your work? So at every at the end of each class work, we normally do either a self-assessment or a peer assessment. So we look back on our own work. We're normally given a success criteria to see what we've done well and then what we can work better on. We then give ourselves a what went well. So for example, it could be in English using a wide range of language or anything like that and then you give one thing to improve on for for example it could be more range of punctuation in English as well. We'll also do dirt time and um, so we'll either get a set as homework or we'll do it in class but we'll do so we're trying to improve our learning and what we've done in the assessment or small tests so it helps us to see and we'll do it in red pen so we can see clearly in, when we're looking back at our books what we need to improve on and remember for next time. Also, being in year 11, we're closely marked against GCSE mark schemes so that whenever we complete an assessed piece of work, we know what we have to do in the real exam to improve. Um, and just to add, teachers sometimes give a whole class feedback, which also helps us to understand as a class what we need to improve on, which helps as we can sort of understand each other. And when we do peer assessment, it's better. It's, I find it better that way personally, because I then feed off of my peers like ideas. Perfect. Thanks so much, girls. Um, I think I'm also going to pass this question to uh, Mr O'Milly um, just to explain a little bit more about how we grade some students, maybe at Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4, um, in a little bit more detail for you. And then I'll pass you back to the students. Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, so, I mean, I know grading is really important, but to me, what's really important is also the, the element of progress. So a grade is one thing, but what's really important is for all the students to make progress over time and not just for the performance of a one-off exam. So 
that's why in the in the chat I took the liberty to respond a little bit as well. You'll have your like the students mentioned your little quizzes at the start of every lesson, just so that the teacher gets to get a flavour of where the students are at, but also for the students to realise where they're at, so that then by the end of the lesson, through the input of the teacher, the reflection they've made, the activities they've made, whether it's in uh, physics, in science, or in English, or in maths, or in PE. Then when the teacher asks again questions, when they bring up the success criteria again, like the students mentioned, they can not only self-assess, but and that's really important. It's one thing for the teacher to be able to say, wow, they've made progress. Wow, they've got some fantastic grades. But actually what's really important is that the students, they walk away from the classroom knowing what they've done well and where they've made progress so that then when they get to the next lesson, they can make progress. And that's really important. And also on the matter of um, students' ability, Amazing, thank you so much, Mr. Emily. Um, another question's come through that I actually think is probably only best answered by our head teacher. Um, so I'm going to pass you over to our head of school, um, Mike Hiroshima, who's going to answer the question, um, what makes e ESJ better than any other secondary school? Um, so over to you, Mr. Hiroshima. Evening, everyone. Uh, thanks, Mr. Vickers. This one's really put me on the spot. Um, I, think it's, I think it's an unfair question. I think, uh, firstly, we have excellent relationships. We're part of a trust. We're really proud to be part of BMAT. So we work really closely with other uh, BMAT secondary and primary schools. We work really closely with um, all our local primary schools as well. And hopefully you've enjoyed some of the lessons that we've put on. We work closely with Epping Forest secondary schools, uh, to name a few that um, you know we have really, really strong positive relationships with. West Hatch, Rodin Valley, Davenant, we're really, really close to, we work together. I think that's the important thing, that schools are community hubs and they work together. The thing about Epping St John's that makes us special, not better, but what, what makes us special is we are a community school. I, I say all the time, there's one secondary school in Epping. Epping wasn't always proud of its secondary school. I think that's very different now. Epping is very proud of its secondary school because not, it's not always about exam results. It's about all students making progress, as Mr Amelia has, has alluded to. But it's also about developing the whole child. It's about saying whatever you want to do, whatever you want to be at this school, you can be it, you can become whatever you want. It's a seven year journey now. Our sixth form is bigger and better than ever. You will do well in exams. Learning is so important. But if you want to go around the world at Epping St John's, you can. If you want to play football and go to the theatre once a month at Epping St John's, you can. There are so many wonderful, diverse opportunities at this school. And as I said, every single child matters. There is no invisible child. There is no one that's left behind. And I think if you go out there and speak to people in the local community, they will back up what I'm saying. There has been a shift in the perception of Epping St John's, which wasn't always great, but is much, much better than it has been. And it's because we've worked so, so hard to develop links with our community, but also to de develop children over their seven year journey with us. And that's why this is a tough decision for all of you, for parents, for students in year six. Uh, but what I can promise you is that we leave no stone unturned in making sure that every single student gets the very best, every single student is stretched, and every single student makes the most of all the opportunities that are on offer here at ESJ. Thank you, Ms Vickers. Perfect, thank you, Mr. Oshmo. Um, another question has come through that I'm going to pass over to um, our year eight students, actually. I think you'll be best to answer this one. Um, so how do I make friends as my primary school friends are not going to ESJ? So if you're coming to St John's on your own, how are you going to make friends quickly here? Hello, um, I think making friends in primary school, in, sorry, secondary school, is very easy. Um, I think form is a perfect social breeding ground. Um, I can almost certainly guarantee that there will be others in your position if you don't, if you have a primary school that normally people came from to come to Epperson John's. I know I certainly did. Um, there'll be other people looking to socialise, make new friends, and get to know the school a lot better. And and there's also other things outside of school that can really help bond. And um, yeah, form time is perfect. Just to add on to what Thomas said, myself, I only knew three people coming up from primary to secondary 
and form time, as Thomas said, is a really key point to socialise with other people from different schools. But also what's quite important is that people from your school going to the same school, our school tries putting some people from the same school together so that you know some people. Also, there's um, a summer school that takes place during the six weeks holidays, which sadly didn't happen this year due to COVID. And that's where you get to meet lots of people that won't just be in your form group, but that whole year. And with clubs as well, you get to socialise with other year groups outside of school. Amazing. Thank you so much, guys. Um, another question that I know is going to be on a lot of your mind is about homework. Um, so I'm going to pass you to Ruby, our year nine, who's going to talk to you a little bit more about how homework works at FS John's. Hi. So basically, we've got a new system in place called Reading Races. We get them set by every subject and you will have a little box with loads of different things relative to that topic, like things you can read or watch or listen to. And you'll put down your keynotes from it and then you'll put how it's helped your learning. And this is easier because you've just got your reading race sheets instead of having loads of different sheets of homework everywhere. They will be set in every topic, but it's definitely manageable and they'll be set on show my homework where students and parents can see and it will easily be set out so you can see what's due, what date is due for, things you've done in the past and things that can be overdue. So it's definitely manageable and we've definitely got an easier system in place now. Perfect. Thanks so much, Ruby. Um, I've seen a couple of questions about clubs and I'm just super quickly going to touch on that because I know that um, people have been talking it through. Um, clubs do run every week. We have 26 different clubs available um, across a range of departments that students can join. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, because of COVID restrictions, um, we are running a virtual um, extracurricular programme, um, which we started during lockdown, which proved incredibly successful. Um, we actually have 494 students um, in our school that have signed up for at least one club. Club, um, which is incredible. So students here really do value the extracurricular opportunities that we're providing. Um, so absolutely for all of you who come, um, it's not like primary school where you have to pay for some of your clubs that run after school. They're all free for you to come and get involved in and kind of try a little bit of everything, try new skills and um, develop new passions and things like that. So yes, the clubs are on every week um, in all of the departments. So um, you'll be very, very welcome to join any of those that you would like to join. I think that we've answered every question. So well done uh, students in the room and well done students at home. Some of your questions have been absolutely fantastic. Um, so very, very well done. We hope it's helped and we hope um, you're leaving this event knowing a little bit more about St John's um, than you did before. But if you would still like some more information, um, then please feel free to go to um, our link tree, which is on the board. And um, the link tree has a link to every transition document that you can possibly need, including a digital prospectus. And um, it also includes recording of our previous virtual events and um, the student leadership tour video is going to get uploaded onto there so that's where you'll be able to find all of the information and documents that you need um, there is also a transition tab um, on the school website under about us um, and our school website is displayed on the board as well and likewise if you've got any further questions and um, please don't hesitate to email us and we'll do our best to answer them as soon as we can thank you very much to all of you at home and um, for logging in in your evening to come and join us this evening and um, thank you to the students and teachers in the room uh, for being a part of it. Um, thank you very much. And as I said, we look forward to hopefully seeing you um, in the near future when we can open our doors for a face to face open evening again. Thank you.